In this demonstration, we will develop a lighting layout for a medium-sized exterior parking area. Part 1 in the series details direct lighting calculations and printing or exporting from model mode. Part 2 in the series extends the same application into rendering, and Part 3 concludes the series with page builder output. The first step in most exterior site lighting analysis projects is the import of a CAD-created site plan to serve as a background for your analysis. Begin by selecting the import command from the toolbar. Select the CAD file in DWG or DXF format. When the import dialog opens, verify the units by looking at the drawing extents. We will double check this on import. Now flatten all coordinates to Z equals zero, as this is a two-dimensional file containing drawing entities only. Now open the viewer. It can be resized as desired. You can navigate in the viewer to get the best perspective of the entities to import. AGI32 uses a smart select process to select only layers that are thawed and on. You can click individual layers to see what entities are included. If you like, you can use the control click process to select only the layers that you want to import. We will simply use the smart select option. The next dialog displays what the import engine found in the file and was able to import. Click OK to proceed. With the drawing imported, it is important to verify your selection of units in the importer before you start working. A mistake at this point will lead to incorrect computations. Zoom to an area on the drawing where a dimension can be verified. It does not have to be exact, unit errors are typically very obvious. In this case, zoom on a parking stall. It should be somewhere in the area of 9 feet wide. Use the measure distance tool to verify the parking stall width. Our units check out. Open the project manager. Notice the imported CAD file is in a separate project. This makes it easy to turn it off or remove it if necessary. All of the imported layers are also seen here below and can be switched off or deleted if desired. Locate the origin. If it is far away or even simply in a meaningless location, it can be convenient to relocate it for our lighting work. If the end result is to export the information back to merging CAD, AGI32 can move it back automatically on export. Use the Translate Origin command from the Tools menu to place the origin at the lower left corner of the project. Basic site analysis requires only obstructing entities to be included. It is good design practice to make sure that buildings and other objects that will have impact on the calculated illuminance are accounted for. We can use the object polygon command to place a solid to account for the exact building shape. If the CAD drawing is nicely created and the building shape is a polyline, we can simply select it and extrude the building height. In the next step, we can place some calculation points for the point-by-point -point illuminance calculation. There are a number of ways to do this in AGI32. This site is rectangular, so we can use a simple two-point grid to cover the entire site with points. In the dialog, label the calculation grid. It is handy to label everything you do in AGI32 for identification purposes. Set the point spacing to 10 feet in both directions, then change the number of decimals to 2. We will include points up to 20 feet outside the property line, so we'll begin at negative 20, negative 20, and then go to 20 feet beyond the site on the upper right hand corner. Notice that we have points under the building. We can easily remove these using the remove points within entities command. Select the single option and click anywhere on the building perimeter. Right-click to accept the selection and remove the points. As we are interested in some accurate statistics for the core parking area in order to verify we have met our design criteria, we can use a statistical area to summarize the points. Select the statistical area command from the calculations toolkit. In the dialog, remove the check marks from the label as we don't need this on the drawing and will handle the summary through other means later. 
click OK and draw the statistical area. With our site set up for calculations, the next logical step is to create our luminaire definitions. We could have done this earlier as AGI32 is not particular about the sequence of commands. Select the Define Luminaire command from the Luminaire Toolkit. We will select the photometry for this example from AGI32's demonstration ZLUX database. Select the ZL Road LED 100 Luminaire from the Outdoor Area node. Select a pole in the Smart Symbol dialog. Add a 1.5 foot arm length, then add the text single luminaire to the description. Change the model symbol color to red, and enter a light loss factor of 0.85. Complete the definition by clicking Add Redefine. Now let's make a two back-to-back -back arrangement from the same photometric file. This is easy. All we need to do is change the label by appending 2BB. Then change the description from single luminaire to two luminaires back to back. Select a back to back arrangement. Change the model symbol color to blue. And complete the definition by clicking the Add Redefine button. As we are interested in computing only direct illuminance, Set AGI 32's calculation mode to direct with auto calc. The auto calc option will compute each change to the layout at the conclusion of a command. This is usually almost instantaneous. Begin placing luminaires by selecting the 2BB arrangement from the luminaire toolkit. Set the mounting height at 22.5 feet to resemble a 20 foot pole and a 2.5 foot concrete base. Click the locate button. This will drop one instance of the 2BB arrangement at each mouse click location with the mounting height and aiming angles set in the toolkit. Just drop one instance and right click to stop the command. Let's make the luminaire symbol bigger so it is easy to see using the symbol magnifier. Increase the scaling factor to 3. Now we can make an ISO illuminance template to assist with the luminaire layout. Templates are essentially a footprint of the illuminance produced by a single pole location. By matching contours, we can accurately determine pole locations to meet a design minimum. For the majority of sight lighting layouts, only three contours are necessary based on the desired minimum illuminance. In this example, we will shoot for a minimum illuminance of 0.2 foot candles. Our first contour is then a quarter of the minimum or 0.05 foot candles. This is used when four poles contribute to a center point. The second contour is 0.1 foot candles, or half the design minimum, which is used for the two pole interaction. The last contour is 0.2 foot candles, the minimum for one pole and site boundary interactions. Again, the three contours, 0.05, 0 0.1, and 0.2 foot candles. Use the Luminaire template command to select the Luminaire and complete the dialog. We will keep the contours in the same color as the model symbol. Each successive Luminaire arrangement at this height will now have the template attached. It is helpful to enable the point highlighting as we do our layout work so we can see points below our design minimum. Select the Highlight Values button from the Calculations Toolkit. Enable the feature with the top checkbox and remove the check to turn it off later if desired. Select point background to colorize, enable maximum and minimum, and check the top range and enter 0 in the left cell and 0.19 in the right. Click in the color cell and select orange. All points below 0.19 foot candles are now orange. Working from the left edge of the parking area, place the first pole to ensure the minimum on the left property line. Using the Luminaire Copy command, match a second instance of the 2BB arrangement along the parking row such that two middle contours meet at the lower parking edge. Note the distance is 95 feet.
drop the pole with a click. This is now our pole spacing. Before we lay out the rest of the luminaires, we will temporarily turn off the highlight values. Use the Luminaire Array command with the dynamic option to place all the poles on the slower parking row. Use the Select from Existing Location option and enter a spacing left to right of 95 feet. Exit the dialog and set the second point of the array past the median at the right end of the row. Notice the small dots where the locations will be placed. We can repeat the same procedure with the top parking row. We will need a few single luminaires to fill the gaps. Drop one adjacent to the leftmost median mounted pole. Make a template for the single luminaire. The existing contours will be applied. Now complete the luminaire layout. Once our luminaire layout is finished, Turn the highlight values back on. Note our core parking statistics indicate we have met our objective. With our layout and calculations complete, we can present the information in a variety of ways. For export to CAD or printing the basic layout, we may just want to put all of our associated schedules directly on the drawing next to the point by point. From the Drawing and Schedules Toolkit, select the Schedule command. We will place three schedules beginning with the calculation summary. Select the calculation summary from the list of available schedules. The default fields are all we need in this example. Enter a text size of 5 scaled feet. Click OK and drop the schedule on the drawing just beneath the origin. Right click to bring the schedules command up again. Now select the luminaire schedule from the drop down list. As we are working with LED luminaires, the default lamp lumens field is not necessary. Uncheck. Place check marks in the following fields. Luminaire lumens. UWLR or lumens above 90 degrees. And finally, bug rating. Now exit the dialog and drop the schedule below the previous. Right click one more time and select the luminaire location summary schedule from the drop down list. Accept the defaults and drop the schedule. At this point we can easily print the layout using the print command from the file menu. This includes printing to any PDF printers you may have configured, or in many instances the results are exported to DWG format and integrated with existing CAD drawings. Let's take a quick look at our export options to conclude part 1 of the simple exterior. The first thing we see is we have a variety of DWG and DXF flavors for export. Once the file name is provided, the export dialog opens and we can see the flexibility we have in resetting the origin, remember we moved it, selecting what types of AGI32 entities to export, and setting layer naming strategy. This makes it easy to tailor your CAD export for seamless integration with existing CAD drawings. Be sure to watch part 2 and part 3 of this simple exterior example where we add more surface information, render, and utilize the page builder output option. Thanks for watching.